The first maps we know of that have survived were about 5,000 years old, you know, on clay tablets. But it was only a few hundred years ago that there was sufficient data and statistical understanding to go beyond just simple maps and actually create data maps, maps that contained information about differences between different, different places. So that was in the 1600s um, where that, um, that came together. And, you know, in the, in the 17th century and 18th century, with the rise of printing uh, and the rise of some mo more modern mathematics and, and some basic statistics, there was a, an expansion of, of, of graphics. Most of it, almost all of it, were either maps or simple time series. So those were the most widespread graphics. And they remain probably the most widespread graphics in newspapers today, just basic maps, maybe basic data maps, and, um, and time series plots. This is where Tufte gets into sort of research design issues. But he says, you know, there's something fundamentally unsatisfying about most time series plots in that, you know, the passage of time alone doesn't necessarily tell us what's happening. So yes, things changed over time, but we don't really know why without additional information. Now, sometimes a time series is useful if there are, you know, important events that took place at a certain point. You know, the French Revolution happened and there was a big change that year. Well, you know, that's plausibly related to the French Revolution. So it could be that a time series can get us closer to causal explanation if we enhance the time series with other pieces of data. So that could be useful. Um, but in general, um, you know, the real progress in data visualization happened when there was this kind of combination of distinct variables and the relationship between them uh, that, that was independent of, of a simple time series. And that's really what happened a bit later in, in the, um, mainly in the mid to late uh, 1700. So he, he has a lot of figures um, by these, these sort of pioneers in, in data visualization and graphics, Lambert, Swiss mathematician, and then William Playfair. Great name. Um, and Playfair actually, there's a ton of stuff by Playfair in the, in the book. Um, so what, what does Playfair do? He basically made time series plots mainstream. He really started using them widely and, and made them mainstream for the, for the presentation of economic data in a way, they were kind of used in a scattered way before then. He made them widespread. And apparently, according to Tufte, he invented the bar chart, invented the pie chart, and was the first person to use area to depict quantity. So he would, you know, present various types of, you know, economic data, political data, and, and basically size observations by, by quantity, like, trade quantity or something like that, trade volumes. So he was really an innovator. Um, and this 1786 book was, was, very, uh, was very important. So within a very short amount of time, a lot of these tools became you know, widespread. And like, these are sort of like still what like Excel you Like if you go to Excel, graph, you know, plotting types, it's still kind of like Playfair's playlist. You know? It's still kind of the same, the same stuff. So what are some of the things that, that he did uh, you know, these are some of the early time series. This is trade data. You can see the, you know, the imports into England and then the exports out of England. And so you can basically see the trade balance here, you know, over time. One thing that Playfair always did is he really integrated graphics into his uh, sort of words into his graphics all the time. And a lot of the early figures do this. And then for a long time, figures in scientific research stop doing it, but they're sort of, words are back. I think that's the, the kind of feeling of a lot of uh, recent work. But um, so this is, you know, the trade balance over time. This is one of the first bar charts, you know, where the dark line, he says at the bottom denotes, you know, the black lines are exports um, and um, the ribbed lines are imports. So again, he's sort of distinguishing between exports and imports here into different, um, different countries. So he's presenting, you know, data in various ways. Um, so what uh, Minar is doing here is he has a graphic on the fate of Napoleon's army uh, when he tried to invade Russia. So for people who aren't you know, familiar or forgot this episode or blocked it out, um, you know, Napoleon had conquered most of Europe, decided to keep going east. He should have stayed in Poland. He never should have gone to Russia. It was a huge mistake for him. He decided he was going to go conquer Russia. He left with this massive army. And, you know, between uh, the, Ru you know, the Russians sort of burning every town before he could get there and destroying food supplies and a brutally cold winter, his whole army was annihilated. And shortly after that, you know, he was, he was removed from power. So this is, 
a pretty interesting figure. It's a combination of a time series and a data map to begin with. There's very effective use of color. Let me explain, explain the figure. This is a map. So this is Poland, and I was going east into you know, Ukraine or something, and then into Russia. This is Moscow up here. The orange line is the army he started with going to Moscow. And the, thick, the thickness of the orange line is how many soldiers he had. And you can see every place he goes, he's losing soldiers to disease, to battles, et cetera. So by the time he gets to Moscow, which the Russians had burned to the ground, so it was like nothing to eat, there was nothing to do, he had already lost, you can see visually, the majority of his army. Then he had to return. That's the black line. And what's in this bottom aspect of the figure, and this is actually very nice, because the bottom aspect uh, panel of the figure links up to the black line in terms of dates. So at this date, this has the temperature. At this date over here, this is the temperature. And what ends up happening is it was a brutally cold winter with minus however many degrees. So basically, as his army retreated, it was getting colder and colder and colder. So he basically gets back to his starting point with like him, his horse, and his cook or something. I mean, I, so this is a time series in different directions. It's a map. You can see the link to temperature, which is, has causal explanatory power. It's kind of an amazing figure. And when you think about it, this must have taken a long time to conceive of. There were a lot of different pieces of data. It's driven by a real substantive understanding of the historical episode. It's driven by sophisticated use of data. And it's, it's beautiful. The colors are beautiful. Um, the other thing to note is you know, the different panels are kind of lined up. We'll come back to this later on in a way that makes them both more effective. Like If these were side to side, it would be much less powerful to see that as they kept going, the temperature just kept falling uh, here. So it, it, it is, I don't know if you know, Tufti's right that it is the greatest figure you know, ever you know, made or something like that, like the Muhammad Ali of you know, figures or something. But um, it's a pretty nice figure.